Welcome back to another torch review. I have the Olight S1A baton in for testing. Now, this was another sample sent to me by Olight, but as ever, I'll go through the potential advantages and disadvantages to this model. Looking at the front, just some specs on the bottom here and on the side, this shows that you have one lithium iron, which is a 1.5 volt AA included. On the other side is the QR code, takes you to the website. Now it's worth reading this, it goes through the spec in a bit more detail. You have a XML2 LED. This model also features an output up to 600 lumens if you're using a 3.7 volt lithium battery. Now, opening up the packaging, as usual, Olight are pretty good at making uh, very small packages. You'll see that there is a ring around the top of the light there but that isn't a spare o-ring that is just for the packaging to hold it in place and then pull it out. On the back there you have the instruction manual which we'll look at in a second and there is also the hand strap included. It's very much like the other o-light hand straps you have a small metal pin here to help you put it through the base cap cutout area and it's good quality strap too. You have an adjuster and it's got a bit of flexibility to the material. Onto the user manual, it's worth having a look at this in a bit more detail because it has different run times and outputs for the types of battery that you're using. So we move down to that spec now just to have a closer look at that. You can see the run times. What it doesn't list is nickel metal hydride, so they will be quite a bit higher than the alkaline, but lower than the uh, AA. 1.5 volt lithium battery that's included. They always have a longer run time. You also have uh, rechargeable run times as well there. This gives you the operation and installation, very straightforward. You also have st strobe modes, um, a single strobe and a timer too, two timer settings. Looking at the body, very much in the style of the other baton torches from Olight. Very nice quality. You have a hexagon shape at the top which prevents rolling lots of knurling on the body we we'll take out the protector which stops the battery from discharging and this is the 1.5 volt lithium cell that is included that's non-rechargeable so that's a single use cell just looking over the rest of the body styling on the baton torches is very much the same you have a fairly flush switch on the side not entirely flush though you have the spring on the base cap too. Now I have an Olight 14500 cell which is a protected uh, 3.7 volt lithium cell and that fits into the torch absolutely no problems at all. It's a bit more proud than the standard size AA batteries but there's no issues at all fitting that in. It uh, screws up tightly and connects properly with the water resistant uh, seal on the washer. So you have a choice of batteries on this torch which you you didn't have on the S2A, so you can use any 1.5 volt cell, including the alkaline or the 3.7 volt 14500 rechargeable cells. The base is also magnetic, which is a feature of many of the baton torches. You can see here sticking to the S1R that I have. And we have a special type of lens on the front of the reflector too. These torches are all using the same um, LED can remove the clip and turn it around though it does stick out slightly above the top section. It's quite a decent clip though uh, if you didn't want to use it you can just take it off it's quite a strong fitting. Now comparing the torches here as I was saying earlier about the LED there is a substantial size difference the S2A on the left as you can see two AA cells that takes and it's quite a bit longer. The S1A in the middle which is uh, significantly smaller, and the S1R on the right, which is the CR123A cell, and that's the smallest of them all. And as I said, they all have the same LED and that special type of lens on the top. This is comparing it to the Rofus TR10. It's uh, slightly smaller than that in the normal position, and they have a different arrangement on the reflector. It's a dimpled effect on the Rofus. They're just different types of torches which might serve different purposes and you can also twist the head on the Rofus around which is a nice feature. I'd like to see Olight come out with something like that. As you can see it's a little bit shorter once you've changed that over and comparing it to the S1R you'll see that's the shortest of them all. Now the operation on this is very much the same as the other Olight torches. Single press for on and off and you can push and hold and release once you have the uh, power setting that you wish. 
Alternatively, you can hold down and cycle through the power settings and then let your thumb off the switch at the setting that you want. Also have instant access to turbo and there is a memory on the torch as well. And you have a timer setting which turns it off automatically and you get feedback on which setting you're in with the flashes. Now to enter the moonlight mode, you just push and hold half a lumen on that and to get into the strobe it's just a triple press single strobe mode on this torch quick drop test which is around about one meter there is concrete underneath the floor covering as well so it's fairly hard no problems with that and these standard waterproof tests that I do half an hour submersed and this is IPX8 rated so there are no problems at all there the beam pattern on this is very similar to the other baton torches that I've looked at in this size, very diffused, wide angle spread. Now I'm going through a power test with the nickel metal hydride cells, range of about 90 to 100 foot. Now you can see even with the single AA cell, it's quite a good power output. I'm now putting the 14500 lithium cell in and the power outputs are identical except you have access to the turbo mode and we're into the turbo now as you can see up to 600 lumens that's quite a substantial jump just for interest I put the S2A in as well the power spacings are pretty similar on this torch notice the tint is a little bit cooler the power output is very similar at the top setting on that moonlight mode is half a lumen which is very low you can just barely see you can see my hand here a bit easier. Some people like that super low mode. We started off with the uh, moonlight mode. You can see my hand at the front. And then I'll cycle through the power settings. We're on nickel metal hydride. Up to the medium and then moving up to the high. You see quite a nice output even from a single AA torch. But once we get onto the lithium ion, again, the power spacings are identical. A lot of torches uh, increase their lower power settings. The Olight doesn't. It maintains them exactly the same, except this, where you have the turbo mode. You're up to 600 lumens. That isn't available when you have a 1.5 volt cell in the torch. You can see there's a big difference in output at that level. And we're on the turbo again. Longer range tests. This is a difference from high moving it up to the turbo setting, which are on now. Good power output from this, particularly with the lithium ion. And then we're going through a closer range just to see the beam spread. It's quite a wide diffuse beam. They're pretty similar, although not exactly identical to the other baton torches that I've used. There are a few variations. You get a nice wide output with this torch. It's designed more for a wider field of view rather than range. And onto the roof, you can see, even though it's designed for that, you still get quite a good distance that you can view with the torch. Down the side of the house, I'm cycling through the power settings, medium, onto the high mode. You can see even on high, if you had a 1.5 volt cell, that would be plenty of light for close-up work and we're on to the turbo which it really kicks out the power so just remember you don't have that turbo mode available if you have a 1.5 volt battery just to show you I'm in turbo now on the lithium cell and the house is quite a distance away you can still light that up even though it's not designed the reflector for a very high power output concentration the moonlight if you have adjusted vision you will find it quite enough a lot of people like that super low moonlight mode and onto the strobe, single strobe mode, no SOS with this. Now I'm looking at the lockout function, the S1R I have here. So if you push and hold the power button, once you've turning it on, it goes into moonlight and continue to hold it, it goes into lockout. You see the red LED come on and you can just push and hold to turn it on again. It prevents accidental activation on the side switch. And that feature for me works very well and you don't have that on the S1A, I'm not exactly sure why. If you push and hold moonlight mode, but it doesn't go into the electronic, uh, doesn't disable the electronic switch on the side. And this is a torch that you'd carry in your pocket and you'd be more likely to do that than I found with the S2A, I didn't have too many problems. So an alternative is you can move the clip around to protect the button, 
or you can just twist the base cap slightly and it breaks the connection. So those are potential workarounds. I would like to see that changed in a future design. It's just a small point. Now the runtime tests that I conducted, I first started to get a power drop at around about just over an hour, a fairly substantial one. Um, it does ramp down quite quickly from the high setting, but it's very, very gradually. You got another big drop, 115, and it completely died just under the two hour setting. So the run times are actually pretty good with lithium. Just bear in mind that you drop down from the turbo mode fairly quickly due to the heat that's produced. It is a very smooth transition though, and it's less than obvious when you're using a torch normally day to day. Just a few shots showing you the magnetic base cap and how useful that could be. Um, I find that quite a handy feature, particularly due to the size. It's not a heavy torch, it's very light, so you can attach it to it's like under the bonnet or side of the shed. It's also small enough that you can fit it onto a hat without it being too heavy. That's something you can't really do with the larger 18650 torches. They're a bit heavy to do that. Now I'm just doing some beam shots outside just to show you some more shots from the torch, but I'll wrap up with a summary and conclusion on this. A couple of things that I would change. I would have liked to have had a spare O-ring included. The lack of holster doesn't particularly bother me for a torch of this size, but it would be nice to have an option to get one if you wanted one. And I haven't seen one on the Olight website, so perhaps they'll bring one out, or maybe there is one around. And I would like that electronic lockout on the side switch that would help prevent accidental operation of the torch. That's something that they could bring over from the other models. Onto the positive side, you can use um, 1.5 volt and 3.7 volt lithium batteries. So that opens up a few opportunities and it's a very common battery size. So you'll be able to find them very easily. So if you want to avoid the CR123A cells, this could be a good choice for you. The power output is very good, particularly with the lithium ion cell. And as you'd expect from Olight, the build quality and design is also very good. Also found the runtimes going to be significantly better than AAA torches. So if you're used to a super small torch and you don't want to get too big, then this could be a good option for you whilst avoiding the bulk of the 18650 models. So overall, very nice little torch, but a couple of areas that I would change in a future design. Don't forget to subscribe if you found the video useful. I'll also be doing more torch reviews, batteries, chargers and other items in the future.